Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the WHOOP UCI Mountain Bike World Series press conference here for the UCI Cross Country World Cup in Montana, Switzerland. Uh, my name is Randy Ferguson, and uh, once again, great to have you all with us, and uh, great to have this uh, wonderful lineup of athletes. Uh, uh, we're going to start today, uh, once again, introducing our athletes. We have uh, from Scott Srama uh, MTV Racing, uh, Filippo Colombo from Switzerland. We have Candice Dill from the Republic of South Africa, uh, Linda Indergand from uh, Live Factory Racing, Alessandra Keller from Thomas Maxon and from Q Factory Racing, Finn Trudler with us today. So a very interesting mix of athletes from different categories and also um, one sole non-Swiss with us today in Candice. <laughs> Ta-da! That just dawned on you, didn't it? There you go. Um, Filippo. It's great to have you with us here. Uh, you can hand the microphones over. Um, it was a, haul, a very long haul uh, in the healing process, coming back from that arm injury that you suffered uh, during a road race. Um, you seem to be back even stronger this season than in the past. Maybe, yeah. I mean, um, was the goal to, to go back even stronger than what it was before. And yeah, work super hard uh, through uh, through the through the winter to to be to be ready. Um, and luckily, I still I'm still un, not 100% on the on the descent, and I still have my elbow, which is quite sore after the training and not training properly uh, yet. But yeah, I'm working on it, and it's getting better and better. And luckily, um, the the shape looks quite good so far. So I'm trying to, to keep up like this. Um, it must be a very interesting environment in which to evolve for the Scots Ram MTB racing team. Uh, you're with some great names like Nino Schurter, uh, Thomas Frischneck, uh, Kate Courtney. Um, how do you feel you fit in to this uh, greatness within your team? <laughs> now, obviously, it's, it's great to have uh, those names in the, in the team, to especially to, to be together with Nino. It's, it's a huge privilege that uh, we other athletes cannot have. And uh, yeah, spending a lot of time together uh, or with him is, is for sure super nice. And uh, seeing how he's performing still is, is just amazing. And uh, I'm trying to take advantage of, the, of my situation. And uh, yeah, also the team itself um, works super smoothly together. We are like a family. And um, yeah, exactly. We all the stuff together works in, in the same direction and uh, it's super, super nice. Uh, we are all, all super happy to work together. Now that you're also making it very often to the podiums or part of the, the, the top elite men right now, uh, it used to be just Nino. Has, have the dynamics changed a little bit in the team? Are there, is there more breathing room for you, if I may use that expression? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, uh, it's, this is almost my first year with the team. Uh, last year, I almost skipped the whole, the whole season. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, there is room for, for everybody. Obviously, Nino deserved the... <laughs> <laughs> the 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 treatment and the respect that uh, there is no doubt about, um, but yeah, I've absolutely the the all the the support that I need and even more. Well, we saw Nino still very much in the game last <laughs> week. <laughs> Talking about being in the game, uh, Candice Lill from uh, South Africa. Um, it was not only a magical moment for you last weekend, uh, Candice, uh, it was a magical moment for South Africa. I don't know if a lot of people know, but there was a fact that did stand out, is that from the U23 women's, U23 men's, elite women's and elite men, uh, there was a South African on the first row of every single one of those races. How do, uh, how do you see this up and coming? What is the main reason behind these uh, performances by Alan, by Tyler, by Luke, by yourself? Yeah, I think there's no denying that South Africa is, let's say, the people are really tough and resilient. Um, but in a sport like mountain biking, I think we don't get the same support from a young age that um, perhaps other countries do. And yeah, so it's just, it's really a lot harder, I think, to come through the ranks and to perform at, at any sort of decent level internationally. And I think, yeah, there's a few factors um, yeah, with Luke and Tyler being in the under-23, they are really talented riders. And I think just having the right guidance um, with, uh, well, ahead of them 
um, with coaches, with, well, personally for myself and Darren, we've taken Tyler a little bit under our wing to help her um, and support her where we can. Of course, I still learn from her as well. But yeah, I think it's just about, if I look at the Swiss or people like the French that have done really well in mountain biking, I think there's a good system of mentorship and examples being set by all the athletes that can feed into the younger athletes through that system. And we just haven't had that yet in South Africa. And I think this was indication that it's starting. Uh, we've seen a lot in, in South African downhill with Greg, you know, really leading the charge. Unfortunately, Burry, untimely death, he was one of the, the forerunners when it came to mentoring and especially inspiring young South Africans. Um, it's been a long road for you to where you made it last weekend in Val di Sole. I read something really interesting that you said in the media about um, you remember sitting in boardrooms uh, of big companies in South Africa trying to garner some sponsorship, basically acting as their sports marketing person. Um, some very frustrating times for you uh, through those days, but when you realized something like last week in Val de Sole, how were you feeling? Like, were you saying like, I told you so? What was going through <laughs> your mind? I think, yeah, last weekend in Val de Sole was the culmination of a lot of, yeah, a lot of years of, of really struggling, um, but also, yeah, small victories along the way, I guess. I think it's difficult to describe the emotion. Like there's, there's so many emotions. I've processed it a little bit now. Um, but I think a few years ago, I definitely didn't have the capacity to do this. I think, as you said, Darren and I have had to find all our own sponsorships. We've had to essentially manage and run a team and do all our own organization and admin together. And I think for years it was really tough. Um, but through many years of, of doing it, and it, yes, it has taken a lot longer, um, we've sort of figured out a good recipe, um, how to work with sponsors, how to balance everything, how to manage the relationship between us as well. And I think Valdisol was just a, a good moment to top that all off. Like, it just said, okay, you know what, we can do this. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, the finale of the race, we saw the emotions as you crossed the line. Uh, we saw the emotions on the podium. Has that sunk in? How has this last week been for you? How has that gone? It's been a little bit weird. It's been different. Um, but I think, yeah, it, it was a lot to process. And I'm trying to process it in a way that's not like having this weekend coming up still as another World Cup. I don't want it to shadow anything. And I don't want it to take away from my enjoyment of, or our enjoyment of the moment. And I think it shouldn't be about you know, you did this well last weekend, oh, therefore it means that you're going to also do well this weekend. Like, I think I should just enjoy every moment as it comes and you know, focus on the process as I always have. Thanks, Candice. Thank you. Finn, welcome. It's good to have you with us. Um, a new team this season. Uh, we're seeing a new Finn Trudeau. I was looking at your results, comparing them with the last couple of seasons. Um, World Cup podiums, European champion. Um, is it the change of scenery now moving to Cube Factory Racing that has really helped you develop and race so, so strong this season? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I found some new motivation with the new team, but also it was my first winter with just focusing on the training as I did a work by side. And uh, I think that really helped me to focus more on the training. And uh, this is also probably why I stepped up my game. Kira Boom was saying a few weeks ago at the press conference, your teammate, that uh, you bounce a lot off each other. You mo uh, like intermotivate yourselves within the team. Is that a fact for you also? Yeah, sure. I think it's super nice to see the success through the whole team. Also with Luke running super strong. So it's nice to have a good spirit and also see the results. Yeah, and last weekend was very special with what Luke was going through, what Kira did and what you did also. Um, this season in the U23 men's race, it's really turning for the overall into a battle between two nations, the United States and Switzerland with Luca, the Frenchman kind of slotted in there. Um, what do you think is missing in your opinion, your analysis, because we're halfway through the season, for you to make it to the top spot of the podium? Uh, maybe still a bit experience, uh, as I'm not used to race in the front 
that much than, for example, Riley. And uh, yeah, I still have next year for for the overall, uh, as I'm just third year on a 23. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next year as well. A very strong start for a first year, though. <laughs> uh, you're a second here last year at the national championships on a very different course. Briefly, how do you compare last year's course versus what you've seen here now? The, I think the uphill sections are more or less the same, but they really changed up the downhills. I think it got yeah way more technical, and but yeah, it's super exciting track. Alessandra, hello. Hope all is good. <laughs> uh, Alessandra, you won two national championships uh, on these courses last year, something close to it. Um, do you think that with the changes made this year, it's still something that you could accomplish, winning the doubles? Yeah, I mean, um, the course, as Finn said, was different uh, comparing to last year. Generally, yeah, I mean, the downhills, uh, they, they changed it. Um, I think there's still going to be some changes at the moment. Um, yeah, to me, the in general is a lot of climbing, uh, but I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, the uphills, yeah. I mean, if it's going to be not muddy, I'm not sure how much it's going to be rideable. That's that's one thing. But uh, yeah, I hope for <laughs> a little bit drier conditions. And yeah, the. The short track, we will see how, how it's going to be. I expect the race not to be like um, big groups and not a fast one. And um, that's for sure. A lot of climbing, uh, single tracks and everything. But yeah, um, the adaptions, when they will be finished, I think is, is for sure fitting me. And yeah. The uh, key to the success then to winning the race here is to be really an all-arounder, good climber very good technically and able to really motor on those flat sections. Yeah, I think uh, the key for success is like to have the best average speed, basically. That's the thing. Um, the average speed for the uphills and the downhills. Um, yeah, the man build sections, they're like, everyone can ride it. It's not to make a big difference. I think there is just to get through like clearly fine and without any accident. And yeah, and then we will see uh, also with the short track. I expect, yeah, it's a very long loop. So I expect it to be in a yeah, single person. So it's still 20 minutes and then, yeah, we will see towards the end. Um, this season is lining up to be probably the closest when it comes to the overall battle since you won on the last event in Val de Sole in 2022. Um, this weekend, Polian's not racing. So that takes one of the variables out of the equation but there's still a, a very strong contingent of riders that are here. Is the objective for you, because it's a busy season, it's, we'll talk about it after, there's the Olympics, there's the World Championships, and there's the potential of the overall. You're sitting very well in the overall. Is that an objective for you this year? Um, I didn't even know Pauline is not racing, but yeah, for sure, uh, um, the overall is a sub uh, an objective. So, I mean... Yeah, we will see how it develops through the season. That's for sure. That's one thing. But the main thing is Olympics. That's for sure. I mean, yeah, I'm basically trying to get to the Olympics or preparing for the Olympics in, since Tokyo. It was one of my biggest goals. So it's every four years. So I'm, that's like number one. And then, yeah, World Champs is one. And because I'm a consistent athlete overall, so... That's why the overall is also <laughs> a goal for me, basically. And yeah, I'm sitting in a good position. A lot can happen, actually. But I try to take every race as a like check towards the Olympics and do my best and build up the form toward or shape towards the big highlights. And then, yeah, see what, what we're going to get from the overall. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, Linda. Uh, you're having one of your best seasons of your career, anyway, of late, of the last few years. Um, what do you attribute that to? Was there a different preparation uh, this uh, winter? Is it the team, the way that the dynamics are evolving? What's uh, the main factor for you? Actually, I didn't change that much. I was going more 
for ski mountaineering in winter time and some more cross country skiing at the beginning of the winter. I really enjoy spending time in the snow. And then, yeah, I just could train over the winter in general really well. And uh, we have really good team vibes this year. And having Ronia back now since Valdi Sole is also nice. And Chen had some really amazing races in Brazil. So we could really help each other to get dialed the, the lines and the tracks. And yeah, we were both, or we were all excited to race again. Yeah, and it really showed uh, last weekend, talking with Ronia a little bit and with Jen. Uh, having her back, the team felt complete, I imagine, for the first time this season. Yeah, for sure. We are really happy that she made her way back. And I guess she she can show again where, where she is. And I really hope that this weekend will turn out well for her. Do you see, <clears throat> as, a, as a fellow Swiss rider, yourself a bit as a mentor for someone like Honya? Or are you just same level teammates, just trying each other, helping each other do the best they can? Um, actually, we know each other since a long time. We have a lot of camps together with the Swiss national team. And so she she was with us, with the national team already since she's a junior. And having her in the team is also special for me, but I don't see myself like I'm, I'm the best rider in the team and, and you are somewhere down. I think more like we are all the same person and we all get the same amount of support and everything. So yeah, we try to help each other and sometimes, I, I said it already before, Chen helped me to go over the jumps in Russia and I can help her maybe at some other places. So it's really a win-win for everyone. You said something very interesting about working on the Swiss team and we know how powerful the Swiss are when it comes to especially the cross-country mountain biking. Um, and this is a question for Filippo, well, for everybody except you, Candice, but we'll get into the, something a bit later in regards to that because you've also, Lee, also just been announced as the official member of the South African team for the Olympics, if I'm not mistaken, so we'll get into that. Um, it's a very, very strong year for the Swiss again on the World Cup, U23, women, men, elite women, men. Um, is this driven by the motivation for you individually to shine at events like the World Championships and the Olympic Games? Do you think individually, if I don't know if my question is clear, is it a motivation for every single one of you to represent Switzerland at big events such as World Championships and Olympic Games? Finn? Definitely, it's uh, always a motivation to ride with the Swiss Cross. Um, yeah, I think the Swiss cycling team is doing an awesome job for yeah, youth and also for the elite riders. So it's always super special to race for national team. Um, yeah, go ahead, uh, Alessandra. I want to hear you on that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, one of the coolest things is that, like, we have Swiss champs, we have Swiss cups and races in Switzerland, and we have, like, the seven-year-olds on Saturday and then the elite on Sunday, and it's just, like, the the small ones see the big ones and they get the motivation. They race on the same tracks. They're going to race the big loops. And, yeah, I think that's that's one of the key points why, like, even U23 juniors, they can look up to. And that what, that's basically what makes, what makes it successful. So, yeah, you always have a, a high level to compare to. And even if you're U23, you, you get to race with the elite and you basically race against Nino and the best in the world. And, in the world, and that, that makes it successful, even though it's pretty hard, especially for the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, it's a pity there's only two, but that even lifts up the level, I guess. Same question to you, Linda. That dynamic of not being three again is at the Olympics is quite to the contrary of what happened in Japan. As, as a Swiss rider for yourself, what does it mean for you to wear the Swiss white cross during the Worlds and the Olympic Games where you were a medalist in Japan? I mean, Alessandra said it already really well. It's, it's On one side, it's really nice to have so many strong riders, but it can be really hard as well. And I think that that's one of the key points we have in the national team because in every camp we have like 
world-class level. And if you have a bad day, then you see it immediately, and that's not always nice to have. But in the meantime, you also know if you are not training or like if you just put your legs up and you just see what the others are doing, you will not be able to compete or to catch up with the others. So you always give your best. And yeah, I mean, that's in every country like this also. Candice will give her best every day. But yeah, it, it's also motivating. Yeah, because for a Swiss rider, uh, it's like Norwegian cross-country skiers or Canadian ice hockey players. There is a big pool of talent. And Filippo, how do you, how do you make maneuver your way through that that whole thing? You have a lot of big riders. We talked about Nino earlier on. You know, you're riding for a guy like Thomas Frischneck, who's been there from the onset of what mountain bike is today. How do you, as a young rider, make your way through there? And how do you feel when you represent your country at Worlds or at the Olympic Games someday? Yeah, obviously it's, su it's super nice to have, especially you can take the most advantage when you are at, the, at a young age, being in the training camps or motivating each other. Um, and uh, yeah, super, it's a privilege for sure, in general, for, for the sport in Switzerland to have that many athletes. And uh, it's like a positive cycle that gets, get, gets more athletes and uh, even more people comes to this sport and uh, making more athletes starting doing this sport. And then, yeah, it's just getting better and better. And uh, yeah, obviously it's not always super nice <laughs> uh, when it comes to the Olympic selection. But yeah, this is uh, another small, small problem that the individuals have. But in general, I think for the sport itself, it's super positive. And you're still young. Your, your opportunities will definitely come <laughs> in very soon, sooner than later. Um, Candice, talking about the Olympics, uh, congratulations. Uh, you announced it officially, or I guess, or somewhat officially, you have been chosen to represent South Africa. That's another uh, layer of icing on this beautiful cake of the last few weeks, I guess. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, I have known for a little bit, for a while, um, but I could announce it today. So, yeah, I'm really excited. This, is it your first or second? No, it's my third. This is your third, yeah, because you did, you did <laughs> Brazil London. and uh, London, right? No, I, I skipped Brazil, so I was in London when I was really young, I ah. think 18 or 19, Oof. maybe 19, and then um, Tokyo. Tokyo, great. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again. Thank you. Um, okay, this is the question that I want to ask every single one of you. A lot of talk in the media about the course, the good, the bad. You guys have all ridden it today. Finn. Yeah, the course is really interesting. Um, I really like it. It's super steep uphills, which yeah, quite suit me. So I'm looking forward to racing it. Uh, yeah, you really need to figure out the flow a bit on the downhills. Let's see what they change for tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, super excited for it. Alessandra? Well, generally, yeah, I like the course, it's cool, but um, yeah, to me, it's, yeah, the drops and the man build stuff is like, it's not, we're not ra racing with protection, it doesn't make really sense, there's no real crashing zone, there's, like, you basically crash on the, on the rocks if it's gonna go wrong, and yeah, I mean, for the elite, for the top levels, it's one thing, but then, yeah, you have motivated athletes, but not as skills, not that much skilled. So I think that's too much risk and that doesn't make any sense just because it looks spectacular. And um, that's my opinion. So that's one thing. But in general, the natural parts, I really like it. I like the climbing. I like the uphills. Uh, yeah, as Finn said, it needs some flow. And I think when we can do some more laps, that's what we, yeah. But it's a World Cup course. Yeah, I mean, it's a World Cup course, but still the safety and, yeah, that is, is like, yeah, we can do some adaptions. And I think that was like we could have seen before. It doesn't need that there's like athletes to crash because, yeah, that was that was one thing that was missing. But generally, I mean, we already knew the course from Swiss champs. It's changed. It's changed a bit. Um, I mean, the uphills is. Uh, it's the other way around, so that's actually cool, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Linda? 
I was also really curious about how they changed it since last year, and I was surprised about the, the new features they put in, but I really like the natural side of the track. The, the uphills are getting more difficult and more difficult with the rain, so I hope until Sunday it will dry up a bit, that we also can ride it up and that we don't need to run, but for sure it's going to be interesting racing. Candice. Yeah, I think we're all getting quite similar. Um, for me, the biggest thing is I really I don't want to run the uphills. <laughs> I want to be able to ride uphills on a, on a World Cup cross-country course, so I, I hope that will be possible. Um, but if not, of course, we all have to just roll with it. Um, the downhills for me today were a little bit scary since the mud, or since the rain came. I think the course in the dry is probably really fun to ride and you don't have to worry too much about sliding out. Um, but yeah, there was a few sections where I definitely had to stop and look for a while. Um, but I do trust that I saw them making some changes and I hope they'll make it just safer, especially if it's in bad conditions. Filippo? Yeah, um, it's for sure not one of the, of my favorite track, that's for sure. Um, also, because yeah, the super easy stuff tend to spread out all the all the field, which doesn't make the race interesting. Uh, but let's see. I might be wrong on Sunday, and but especially if it's gonna rain, this spreading out everything is gonna be even more. Um, but yeah, if it is dry and uh, it gets used a little bit more with the terrain. Can be can be interesting for sure. Super difficult, super um, tough, uh, super easy, and uh, yeah, let's see. Um, personally, I'm quite a heavy heavy rider, so obviously doesn't su suit me that well. These kind of tracks, um, I, I know I'm gonna suffer <laughs> a lot <laughs> from from scratch on. Um, but yeah, let's see, let's see. Try, I'm gonna try to have some fun. Good stuff. Do we have any questions from the room? Anybody? No? Well, that's it, my friends. Thank you very much. Uh, all the best this weekend, and once again, welcome to Cotton Montana. Thank you. Thank you.